Julian, uh, it's a pleasure for us uh, and an honor to have uh, an exhibition of you here in our museum. And first of all, I want to thank you very, very much for the hard work you had during the last year, for the magnificent work you did here and for the museum. And uh, to say that for me, it's, it's a pity that uh, your opening and uh, the shadow of your exhibition coincide with this difficult times that we all are living. But uh, I'm sure that in the very near future, I hope so, if people have sense if, uh, uh, and responsibility that in a few ma uh, weeks we can open the exhibition, you return to Lisbon, and then we will do a, a, a really opening as you deserve. Um, and it will be an excuse to come back to Lisbon again. Which is you don't, uh, you don't need the excuse, you are welcome whenever you want to come. Um, this is the first uh, room and we have this fantastic wall here um, with people. People is the, is the main, I think the people is the main uh, subject of all your works, but we, you include uh, in, in this exhibition also animals, buildings. Uh, I think my idea is that you have been drawing our world. Uh, you have any particular message that you want to, to, to tell uh, our visitors or is just a necessity that you have and uh, the way you see the world and the, the way you explore our world? I think that probably the, the second uh, I think too, but I would like you to confirm. That, that exploring, experimenting, drawing, playing, these are the things that I, I love to do and I find myself doing. You know, the, you see people stand in front of something and immediately find their camera and take a photograph. And that, that sense of wanting something from what you see, wanting some engagement, something that you can do with it, mm -hmm. not just the act of looking, but something more than that, is something that I've always felt as, as, as a person looking around at the world. I wanted to, to take what I could see and engage with it, communicate with it, play yeah. with it. Yeah. Because Make sometimes, it. sometimes it's difficult to see everything, so we have to reflect a, lo a lot to, to 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 understand a little bit the things. And we 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 talk now about one thing that I, I think it's important and it's important in your work. You say that you say people photographing. Uh, you use in in your work uh, many technologies, uh, many means. You paint, you use the drawing, you use the photograph, the video, the the LEDs, everything. Uh, this diversity of uh, technologies and techniques that you, that you can have for your work is important. You think that uh, uh, each of them can bring uh, another mean to your works. Uh, can you tell us yeah, uh, a little I, I bit mean, about it? I see it? ways of drawing, technologies of drawing, as much part of the language of art as what it is that you are drawing. Mm -hmm. In fact, you could say that, that the subject matter here is so obvious that it's almost like not important. I mean, you are standing here and I am too. These are people just the same as us. You have great colors on. They have colors that I can use. Mm -hmm. The subject matter is, is the normal world around uh -huh. us, something that you can relate to very quickly and recognize. I don't draw tigers and giraffes because for me, those are not part of my world. Yeah, I'm yeah, drawing cows yeah. and cats. Yeah. Um, it's, you it's, live in London or near London, so you yes. are, you, it's more the city that interests you. So, it's, and, so uh, what, the what, common that, life. what that palette allows me is to then play with, mm -hmm. with all the possibilities of drawing, of technology, mm -hmm. of how to make something, of how to present something of scale. Um, and you, your offer to make a show here with these incredible eight meter high walls meant that I could take this project um, and really take it up to a scale that I'd never done before. Yeah. But I also wanted to to bounce back to these works which are similar but made of aluminium. Yes, more, yeah, our paint, scale, yeah. Which is, yes, as you say, is more the, the scale of humans on the street. Mm -hmm. So that you, you can think, yes, you can think about people when you look at this, but you can also think about scale, mm -hmm. the scale of your body and the movement. And I was, I was looking here at, um, and I, as I do a lot, looking at ancient art, looking at tombs, Egyptian tombs, yeah. Roman temples, yeah. and how they present yeah. imagery and how they communicate with the human body and the building and put art and 
um, imagery in between the human and the building with stone, with yeah. paint, with architecture. Yes, you, you, can, you bring all this, 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 this kind of art, ancient art, modern art, you bring everything for, well, for your work it. in a very contemporary I way. I use it all as yeah. a way of learning yeah. and a way yeah. of understanding the world, yeah. but also as a reference. So this work, because it's painted on four sides, um, like the Arapacus in, in Rome, built by uh, Emperor Augustus, where you have to walk around yeah. The yeah. temple to see yeah. the people walking yeah. around the temple carved on the surface. And that's something that we can invite the yes. visitors to do. Let's so do let's it. Do it. <laughs> okay. So as you walk around, you see the, the technology trying very hard to come around the corners uh -huh. and present the figures um, made out of so solid aluminium. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, these are people from Boston. I think these are people from London. So different cultures here. Different cultures, but at the same time also yeah. a very different method yeah. of building. Here I've made the line coloured and brought it out from the surface. There the line is black yes. and the colours are the It's closed. completely different, and yeah. the black line is, is receding. So you're playing with the eyes and with reading and how you understand an image. Here I was thinking, I've, I spend a lot of time in museums, my family complains, but um, <laughs> particularly the British Museum and some museums in the town where I grew up, and I've always loved that strange cultural uh, mix of looking at ancient things, but they're presented in a modern museum, often on plinths, in a space that is anything but ancient. And so I've tried to present these sculptures of very normal animals that you would find in your like back garden. Like we were in a whole museum, everything but in the also, plinths. Yes, exactly. But to, uh, at the same time, they are very modern because it's very still uh, we, we have here all these animals. Known animals, you told me that this one is your cat. That is my cat. The white. This is a dog we borrow for the summer. This <laughs> is a deer from the park near our house. He was in the garden. Um, the ibis is a little more exotic. I like ibis birds, they're kind of amazing. And yeah. The Egyptians like to draw ibis birds a lot. But there is a zoo, the small urban zoo near our house that has an ibis by chance. Yeah. So. Here again, we have the difference of the scale. Yes. It, with these animals. And we have this magnificent uh, fries with the pigeons moving and uh, bouncing and pulling from one place to another place. It's important to move and in your work and uh, to transmit to the people that is visiting here the, the exhibition, this experience, that something is alive. This is important for you uh, to have, um, you don't know if it's really, they are really, in real, they are real or they are virtual? This, this experience is important for you. Someone came to my studio recently, a curator, a very nice mm -hmm. French man, and he said, oh, it's so weird. It's like the real person or animal is uh -huh. behind the screen. Yeah, yeah. And I, I like, yeah, because I, they, I they, really they like that seem, idea. Yeah. Maybe like a shadow, when, you, when uh -huh. you see a shadow cast, if you see a shadow of someone with a gun, you know, you're scared because the, the shadow tells you that, that you read it as being real. Yeah. And I wrote in the catalog, I think that when I'm cycling home, I have a light that projects an image of a bicycle on the road in front of me. And people jump out of the way when they see this image. It's yeah. just an image, but yeah. because it's moving, because it's yeah. on a bicycle, people your brain is reading yeah. that as something to take as reality. So really the, the way that I'm working is playing yes. with the way that we read yes, the world. Because the way they move, it's, it's really the way they are. And yeah, we, spent, we spent a lot of time yeah, looking at pigeons. Yeah, I can imagine. It we, built a, we built a platform so the pigeons would walk down a piece of wood so we could film them from the side and this is the result. And the pigeons are, are like the most modest animal that we have. No one uh -huh. really takes much notice of pigeons. They yeah. are everywhere. Yeah, People they are everywhere. But children like it very much to give bread and yeah. stuff like that. And so you have... But I thought to make this very grand, almost Romanesque frieze yeah. of, yeah. Once of again. birds would be nice to contrast with the modesty of a pigeon. Uh -huh. Once again, this, this mixed between the ancient and the modern yes. that you so well can bring to, the, to, to your works. You talk about your catalogue. Uh, which is done already, and I think it's a very important piece because it's, it's, it's not a normal catalogue, uh, but it's a catalogue where we can see your works, but where we can see what you think about uh, your works and the way you, you think things and you, you produce, you are producing. It's a very important object for people oh, that wants to know I your I wanted to make work. it a little bit like this walk that 
it's a little bit like wandering through yeah. through a book and, ha and having a voiceover mm -hmm. explaining some thoughts and ideas about the work rather than ver so there are many pictures where there's no information about where the work is or what it's made of but rather just a, a conversation like we're having about yeah. what you think about pigeons and yeah yeah it's a different book yeah. all right okay these are also made from aluminium with car paint these are led technology this is also led technology used in a combination of the what we saw before so you've got the, to, the tomb like presentation of an image that goes around a box yeah. like, a, like an architecture like a small architecture. but in a different way because we, we saw all these pixels and everything which we don't see in the other no. uh, techniques that we have. This is an older group of people um, that I filmed maybe five years ago. They were walking down the street outside my studio and I paid them some money to come into the studio and um, be filmed walking on a walking machine. So we actually know their names. Mm -hmm. Danielle. All of them. Luca. Oh, that's Sometimes great. Sometimes they pass by the studio again to uh -huh. see how things are going. So we're halfway through the exhibition, mm -hmm. and I felt like at this stage it would be nice to have a more tr traditional room mm -hmm. with paintings hanging on the wall, a bit of space around you, time to kind of slow down. There's only one more room to go. So with the dynamic of an exhibition, I feel like people have seen quite a lot. They have an idea of what I'm talking about, and it's a chance to slow down and look at a work maybe for a little yeah, bit longer. Because then they are going to see a completely different room. Um, there's one thing that I would like to, to, to talk with you before we went to the, to the last room of the, the exhibition. Um, you, your, your drawings uh, are very clean, very pure, very stylized. At the, f uh, at the f first uh, time, we, we can see that it's very simple, but it's not. They are very complex, they are very detailed. Each person are different one from the other one. Um, but they are very concise. Uh, but when we analyze your work, um, it's not only the graphite that is important, in my opinion, also the color. You use the color in a fantastic way. way. How important it is uh, for you to use the color? Because at outside we saw um, things more black and white. Here we have a lot of color. In this room we have a lot of color. Yeah, um, color kind of comes and goes in my work at the moment it's really full on as you mm -hmm. as you see and I would try to explain quickly that that I don't feel like I invent anything I don't invent the simplification of the drawings mm -hmm. I don't invent the colors I've never been very good at coming up with some new ideas of my own mm -hmm. what I do is more like maybe a chef is that I gather things and then I play with them I chop them up mm, and I mix them hard. together well for me this is my, my, no, my no, approach no. of art so the, the way that people are drawn here is really taken from looking at how people are represented in the world. If you go to the lavatory door, you see a symbol for man or a symbol for woman. Yeah. It's an international language which you immediately recognize. Mm -hmm. And so I've, I've looked at graphic signs, road signs, symbols around the world, and, um, and developed a way of drawing that uses that language. So that when you see these people, I don't think you think that this is a hand-done drawing. It's more like yeah. a, uh, a logo for a big company or something like that. It's something taken off the street and forced into use for me. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with the colors. So these colors um, in this room are, are particularly taken from the world of safety signs. I think over here you have the safety fire regulation yeah, yeah. Uh, fire extinguisher. Too. And if you look at the sign for the fire extinguisher on the top, it's white and red. And I've taken that kind of language of colors. Um, from the signs. From, from signs, from symbols, from road signs, from safety, from electrical cables. Mm -hmm. I like this use of color that's practical. So mm -hmm. you know that the, the red is live and yeah. the, the blue is, is neutral. Yeah. And so, for instance, if you look at this work here, which is completely new work. In fact, I, I was still working on it when the screen arrived here in, in the gallery and my assistant was programming to change slightly the way that it functioned. But as the person on the left, Mark, runs off, he comes back onto the screen, another color. And as yeah. Padmini, my daughter, goes off, she comes back another color. Yeah. So, because um, we, we change from one day to another one. We do change one. from one yeah. day from, yeah. from the other. And I wanted to, to, to 
think about um, Shakespeare said something like, um, though I'm not naturally honest, I am so by chance yeah. sometimes. Yeah. And I'm, I don't really know how to make an artwork, but I know how to set up a situation yeah. where things can happen. Yeah. And so here, you only have black, white, uh, yellow, blue, green, and red. These are, pure, those the are the colors. possible pure colors. So I have four people and one background. So that leaves one spare color. So each, each there's one color waiting, which is yellow. Mm -hmm. And now there's one color waiting, mm -hmm. which will be green. Yeah. It's important that you say that because perhaps if people come here, they, they cannot uh, see that at maybe the first take, time, at the first it takes glance. A while. The same thing is happening with this film here. Uh -huh. that as, as the person is coming back on, there are these five colors, and the, the choice is there uh, for the, uh, the algorithm of the computer to pick the remaining color. With the, with the paintings, I find it odd when you come in this room because these ones are moving. You half expect these ones maybe to move yeah. as well, but this is a different this technology. This is static, yeah. I took this technology from airports when I'm traveling to, yeah. to go on holiday. I see these big signs telling you to go to departures, and I think that they have a kind of glowing quality, like a medieval church stained glass window. Yeah, yeah so it's I've very glowing, that. all the exhibition. Yeah. Let's go, to the, go to, the yeah, to the last room. So this is the last room of the exhibition, and when I first saw the space, I was trying to think how to make this room not feel like the end of the show. You have to turn around and leave again. It had to be something a little surprising and a little different. So let's go. Let's go. Let's go and, and walk like people should be. I, I think that you did a fantastic job here in this, this room. And, and I understand it is difficult. It's the last one, but to the last one, um, it's important also that we stay with a, 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 an impression and a very good impression. And what, what I like here, it's uh, the thing that you, 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 you were able to feel a little bit of what is our culture because you were inspired in, in our towers, in Portuguese towers. We have here many different towers. And you combine here um, the high ceiling, up, up it's 18 meters, it's, it's, it's too much. Uh, but we have also um, the lightness of the, all the screens. And we can hear also the, the bell singings. And this gave us a very, very strong impression. Uh, can you tell us uh, a little bit why, why you developed this, this work? which I think is really fantastic. Thank you. Well, I'm always trying to, uh, as discussed earlier, to, to engage the physical presence of the viewer with the work. So it's not just a matter of standing in front of a screen or in front of a painting mm -hmm. and looking at something. It's a matter of discovering it and moving around it and, and getting to know an image through your body and through your senses. Mm -hmm. So this work kind of invites you, like a tourist in a way, yeah. to wander around through the work and, and take it in. So I've, I've, I spent a week driving around Portugal after you asked me to do the show, mm -hmm. being inspired by the Tower of Belém and Geronimus just nearby. Yeah. I started with those and I thought, okay, I need some more towers. So I drove mm -hmm. north from Lisbon and spent a week hunting for towers and came back and drew 14 towers, which seemed like enough to, to fill the room and got getting to know the architecture and the towns of, of Portugal as I went. So it was a very nice way to experience and discover more about the uh -huh. architecture. We here. moved, but the towers moved also. These are on yeah. single wires. Yeah. So that I've never done this before so that they yeah. can spin they have independently. Movement. I also find that a lot of times when you're in a museum, what you hear is the click of, of people's uh, shoes and the, the click of their telephones as they make photographs. And this is kind of slightly melancholy, not very nice yeah, sound. Yeah. So I think sound is another way in which we know the world, yeah, yeah. as well as of movement course. and of course image. It is. So I quite often try to find a way of integrating sound using a similar logic to the work. So the work is taking here randomly different people, different colors. So what I did was I took the sound of a single bell and then um, found different notes on those bells. And then I have an algorithm that is playing a, a different random uh, timing on mm -hmm. the bells. So it sounds like some crazy people in, in each of the towers are ringing the yeah. bells and giving this sense of a, 
a random Spiritual. but melodious yeah. sound. And this is something you often hear when you wander around yeah. the countryside. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, these bells are from a town called Oxford in England where I grew up. But could be here. It could be could here, completely. But, but for me, this was part of my childhood yeah. in yeah. Oxford to hear all the towers ringing on a Sunday, mm -hmm. a slightly melancholy sound, but also atmospheric. So maybe when you first come in, you don't particularly notice, and you think, oh, it's yeah. bells ringing in the town, and then you yes, realize that it relates to these. Yes, it could be a Tyrannims, but uh, we, you can't hear here inside the museum. So, so I think we build our picture of the world through the senses we are taking in, through our, our vision and our touch and, and sound. And so when you look at these, which is just a, a simple piece of printed Mm -hmm. nylon, uh -huh. you, you get the scale, you get the image of the, the work, you get the sound of the bell tower, and maybe all of that together can give you a similar sense of when you feel uh, the enjoyment of walking around an ancient medieval town and looking up and enjoying yeah. the architecture itself. And uh, it's a place of uh, meditation and it's, it's quiet here. Yeah, I and think you can hide yeah, like, a, like yeah. a game of hide and seek. <laughs> yeah, you can hide. And th these, these works, like the big wall, are in a certain sense temporary works made specifically for the exhibition because it's not often that you find a room like this so Such high, high to make these works. But this allows me to get away from studio scale. You know, studio scale is like two meters fifty, maybe three meters, then my door is not big enough. And if you make an exhibition only with works on this scale, it can be a bit boring. Yeah. One room after another of this yeah. same relationship. No, no. So but it's the perfect work for for Handy's exhibition. I was hoping so. Julian, this is your first exhibition in Lisbon, and uh, you decide in your project to include many sculptures and many works outside of the museum. We have these fantastic three figures here in the square of the monastery, uh, but we have others uh, in the courtyards and gardens of the, outside of the museum. Uh, can you explain us just a little bit why you decide, or why is it important for you to have these works here uh, before we enter in the museum? Perhaps we can, you can explain and you, we go through the museum and walk along and you are going to explain just a little bit your idea for these works. It's possible? Sure, I'd be happy to. Yeah, well you remember I came here a year yeah. ago or so when you invited me to do the show, which is my usual way and take photographs, look at the space and try to imagine how my works could fit into the, the gallery and best use the spaces available. And I always find that if you can push the exhibition out of the designated exhibition halls, into the hallway, onto the invite card, the catalogue cover, maybe outside the museum on the street, it's a more inviting and inclusive way of making the exhibition. It means I get more space to put my work, which is an advantage for me. And I also like not always to have the works with the backdrop of a white box. Mm -hmm. This is a very quiet and clean environment, which is great for looking at art, mm -hmm. but it's a little bit not like the rest of life. It's taken away from the rest of life. So if you can get out into the real space with the rent bikes and people with shopping bags, it feels like a better communication. Yeah. And what could be a better spot? Uh -huh. and in front of one of the most beautiful buildings I think that I've ever come across, which is the, I think the Geronimus yeah, Monastery is the right pronunciation. It's a beautiful piece of architecture and the city It's a of good Lisbon, way to start. It's a great way to start. And yeah. It's an iconic yeah. position and the, they've amazingly you've allowed me to put my work yeah. out the front here. It's the way you see Lisbon and you see our, our world. Yeah, when I first yeah. came here I saw the Tower of Belém and was knocked out by it and, and then uh, Geronimus Monastery and you'll see some reflections on that visit inside the show later. Yeah, and we have the same stone that they have in the monastery which is also a parallel between these two buildings. It's a yeah, good and start. I've tried to echo that a little bit with the, the plinths which also echo your flagpoles yeah. on the other side of the piazza here. Um, and I wanted to, you know, this, this piazza has this amazing sense of sky yeah, and yeah. space. But the scale is fantastic. Yesterday when I went out from the museum, I passed through by car. And even in, by car, it's, it looks really great. Yeah, they're not actually that big. You I did mean, a very good but job. But I think by being up high, they feel yeah, like they have no, They have scale, scale, they have presence, yeah. Let's go. Okay. okay. Here you put the movement. Uh, the movement is important for you, isn't it? Yeah. Well also capturing the movement of the visitors as they come in. Uh -huh. I often think that, you know, with, a, with a, a film, with a movie, 
the audience is sitting down, they are still, they are static, and what you are experiencing is uh, a projected flat film image. But art is different. Art is uh, engaging you physically. You actually, you are the one who moves. You move yeah. through it, you make those decisions, and the art is around you. You look to the right, you see something, you look to the left, you walk past it. And I try to play on this and make that very much part of the experience of looking at the exhibition. So you've seen one work down there, you have to walk quite away, and as you come up the steps, even though this is quite small, this sculpture, I think yeah. because it's quite bright LED, uh -huh. it catches your eye like a traffic sign, and it's almost perhaps like a symbol to say, you know, hurry up, come this way, yeah. there is more art to be seen this way. So by making this kind of connection from the beginning to this stage, then you can turn right and come into the exhibition. Yeah. I've used a, a work that includes um, one of my children, in fact, and some other people that I invited to the studio. I filmed them running, turned that into a series of drawings, animated that, put that into a program that allows me to move them around this, this kind of um, traffic symbol sign box that also mimics an ancient statue. With real people. With real people. Yeah. And I thought this area feels a bit like a kind of Roman auditorium. Uh -huh. It has a real sense of scale and history, yeah. that having a statue on a high plinth would be the natural thing to see. Normally, of course, it would be a king on a horse yeah, yeah. or a famous soldier, but in this case, it's just normal people from it around. It plays a little bit with us. Yes. Before we enter in the exhibition, let's go to the museum. I thought of asking you for this space, but I thought you can't overdo it. Yeah. And it's nice yes. to get to see the garden. And it's a very inviting view. So mm -hmm. should we go to the garden first? Yeah, for, of course, because there are people that doesn't went to the museum by this side. Many of them went from this side too. Right. So people do arrive from the end as well. So when I'm making an installation, I'm always thinking about the points of entry and the first impression that you get. So here, as you come up and you look across again to the monastery, you mm -hmm. see one work that is placed in order that as you move along, you see a I kind see of that dynamic there are people there. and a sense of movement between the sculptures as if they're moving themselves. Then we have a slightly, slightly earlier work. This is about two years old, I think, this, this work. Buildings. And relates to a series of works that I made quite a long time ago in the 90s. But I found this way of revitalizing yeah. that conversation. You made like a box, rectangular boxes. Is yes, it? they're just presented yeah. as boxes, yeah. but, but by the painting on their uh -huh. outside, it, it, it looks like buildings. refers to buildings. And uh -huh. unfortunately, we have some modern offices. Yeah, we can see from the here hill. the buildings. It's a fantastic connection here. And, you've and off, across. You've the offered me the right hand side of the garden so uh -huh. I can make a sort of outdoor exhibition uh -huh. out here. It looks great here. I would like to keep it here <laughs> for a long time. You're on film saying that. So. <laughs> yeah. So I'm playing here with drawing, with two dimensions, three dimensions, what is flat, what is real, what is suggested. Here we have five uh, crows, maybe if we turn this way. This is what you do normally, you, you play with this whole complexity of our world, playing with the virtual and uh, what is real. And that is very present here. You, we have people, we have uh, buildings, we have uh, animals, we have our world, isn't it? Yes. And I this is a fantastic uh, garden because in, in summer we have, it's always, I don't know if you've ever been here in summer. No. It's but a, we have a lot of people here sitting, having lunch here. Uh, and, peop, and children like very much to come here and to play. So it's fantastic to have this so so full of your works. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, li I like to pick up on the things that I see around me, whether mm -hmm, they're people mm -hmm. walking on the street outside my studio mm -hmm. or the crows that hang around in the park as I get mm -hmm. to work. And I, I see the way that they move and the way that I imagine that I could animate them and give them a sense of no, reality. No, they seem so real. So real when we, we went here. It's really fantastic. Thank it's you. incredible. In fact, they only have four or five different animated movements, uh -huh. but by making them each one have a random yeah. program of, of uh, going through those series of movements, they feel like they're alive and independent, at least that's the, that's the hope. 
it, not, it was not uh, easy to install, but uh, it will wide. Well, I think. they did a good job with yeah. the grass. And yeah. They have names, these sculptures? They do have names, but because these are strangers on the street, I don't know who they are. Uh -huh. So they're not names as in uh -huh. uh, Rita and Julian. They're, I think he's water bottle, hair band, hat, headscarf. Mm -hmm. So uh, I give them the name that you would say if you were trying what to describe doing, someone yeah, to someone. Yeah, that you don't know. No, these people mm -hmm. were photographed in Australia. I had an mm -hmm. exhibition a couple of years ago there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I hired a photographer to photograph people on the streets and near you the do beach. That. You do that always. I've done that often. I've done that in a number of countries because I thought it might be interesting to see how the different mood of different countries came across in the simplified drawing. You know, these people are obviously kind of casual, mm -hmm. quite young. Um, they, there are many differences from country to country. You notice that or...? You do, yeah. I did a series so much in New York and I did yeah. a series in Boston, mm -hmm. Tokyo, Seoul, Mumbai. And each time, I'm obviously in Mumbai, uh -huh. you get beautiful saris and flip-flops. Yeah, yeah. Boston, you get a lot of very casual sportswear. New York's a little more stylish. Yeah, and, of course. Uh, Did you photograph people here in, in, in Lisbon? No, I haven't done that. I've sort of moved a little bit away from that idea of a sort of touristic uh -huh. uh, visit to yeah. different towns. Yes, and because this, the this museum is visited by a lot of tourists. I hope so. Yeah. At the moment, Soon. I've got a different project going, which you'll see downstairs, which is to photograph people in the same place, but at different times of the year. Uh -huh. So you have summer outfits yeah, and winter yeah, outfits. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. And that gives me another kind of yeah, language yeah, and yeah, palette of yeah. different styles. Let's go inside? Yes, it's getting oh, cold. It's getting cold. So I've installed here, as you see, a set of six uh, LCD screens. I use these screens a lot. They're, when I was young, you couldn't really make something move with art without very clunky technology, but these screens, they're so flat and so bright that they feel a little bit like a painting. So yeah. I, I use them quite often. And Looks great. I, I think that's a very st good start for your exhibition. Oh, thank you. This is the, this group of people who are running, but not running athletically. They're running more like they're a little bit late for mm -hmm. an appointment. And I, I asked a lot of people that I knew to run like this to, to make more movement, a slightly more abstracted movement than the normal walking, mm -hmm. um, and something a little more active. It's like they are doing jogging, jogging in the morning, I don't know. Yeah, maybe jogging, or maybe they're just crossing the road and showing yeah. the drivers that they're making yeah. a bit of an effort. Ah. It, just, it gives a more of a strong dynamic and a slightly more abstract movement that I've wanted to use. This was one of the first works that we installed here. And uh, we, last week we had the Museum Open uh, and when people enter, they, they stay here for, for long, seeing your uh, work. So I think this is already a oh, very good nice. start. That's nice. Let's Again, go. with that sense of timing, I uh -huh. wanted a work that you didn't perhaps stop for too long because you've got a whole exhibition to see. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a, an introduction that you can pass, seeing yeah. all the different characters. But there, there is already something that uh, keeps us seeing and looking at. Julian, I have to thank you once again um, for this magnificent exhibition. Uh, and I hope that uh, very, very soon we can reopen the museum that now is closed, as you know, uh, and that people can um, come to the museum again and uh, can have this magnificent experience of uh, seeing uh, your, your world, uh, your works, uh, this is exhibition, exhibition through your eyes. Um, you will come when we will reopen the, the exhibition and then we will do a, a real uh, opening. Uh, but till now, um, I have to thank you and to ask you, please keep safe. Thank you. Um, and thank you for the invitation to do the show. Thank you to Mr. Barada for the use of his fantastic museum. Thank you, you to Mario Sequeira Gallery for yeah. sponsoring and helping and, and yeah, you know, he set was, this uh, show up. My gallery in the north of Portugal. It's been really exciting. I look forward to seeing some people in the yes, spaces. We will see, I, I hope soon. Very, very Thanks. soon. Um, espero que, que as pessoas tenham gostado desta nossa inauguração muito particular. 
Uh, mas nós sentimos responsáveis também por todo o nosso público. Não queremos que venham ao museu enquanto houver público. Queremos que se mantenham uh, resguardados em vossas casas, que sigam todas as diretrizes da Direção-Geral de Saúde e que em breve, quando, quando tudo terminar, uh, possam de novo voltar ao nosso museu. Entretanto, nós vamos uh, manter o nosso site Uh, com muitas atualizações. Vamos ter atividades para as crianças diariamente. Eu sei que é difícil para os pais uh, terem os vossos filhos em casa uh, e, portanto, nós vamos tentar ajudá-los com, com muitas atividades. Não vai ser só para crianças, vai ser também para adultos. Portanto, mantenham-se atentos ao nosso site uh, e nós vamos dando todas as nossas informações. Por amor de Deus, fiquem Uh, salvos em vossas casas e mantenham-se o mais sossegados possíveis. Lavem as mãos, uh, mantenham-se distantes uns dos outros, sigam todas as diretrizes. Obrigada por terem acompanhado esta uh, inauguração tão, tão particular.